The road to Waverly is a twisted tree-lined stretch of highway nestled in the hills of central Tennessee. On Main Street, it's hard to get from one block to the next without greeting a relative or an old friend. Waverly, Tennessee is a town that's proud of its citizens who've decided to serve the military over the years, including 15 members of the McCaleb family who decided to join the United States Navy. So it's not surprising that when 17-year-old Mark McCaleb announced his intentions to enlist, his family was all for it. It was the top of the service to the Navy. And the family felt that way. My entire family feels that way. They felt that way until May 20th, when Dossie McCaleb got the telegram bearing the news of his son's unprovoked murder aboard the USS Saipan. It was followed by a condolence letter from the ship's acting commander. And that's the last Dossie McCaleb's heard from the Navy. I feel like they're trying to cover up something that, that, uh, that I should know or the people should know. Dossie McCaleb didn't know his son's murderer had been sentenced to 30 years in prison until we told him. He's a bitter man who was very close to his youngest son. Mark's mother abandoned him when he was 18 months old. So when his father had his first heart attack, Mark left school in his sophomore year to become the family breadwinner. When Dossie McCaleb was back on his feet, Mark wanted to finish his education. So his brother told him about the military. I said, you get out, you'd be able to go to college, and uh, they would pay for it. And he thought that would have been uh, sounding good to him and we picked the Navy. So Mark went to submarine school, where 300 started and fewer than 50 finished. Mark was in the top 10% of his class. For 13 months, he progressed up the Navy's pay scale. His father says he was busted one stripe for getting into a fight in port after six months in a submarine. He was transferred to a surface ship, the USS Saipan. That's when Dossie McCaleb started getting calls from his son, asking for help and money. And he told me, Dad, if you don't get me off of here, I'm going to get killed. So. How long was that? A week. Mark is buried in a small country cemetery. His family chose to bury him in the Cracker Jack uniform he was so proud to wear. But the Navy was four hours late with the color guard for Mark's funeral. And an Army color guard had to be hastily assembled in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to give Mark the military funeral to which he was entitled. It's been nearly three months since Mark was buried. His father is still waiting for the Navy to deliver the grave marker, and he's still waiting for answers to the nagging questions about his son's death. In Waverly, Tennessee, Kathy Mitkiff, The Daily News. When Dossie McCaleb's son, Mark, was stabbed to death by Seaman Charles Roberts, McCaleb became bitter about what he says is the Navy's lack of concern about its drug problem. I feel like they know they have a drug problem on, on board, and they, and they knew this, they knew that this, this Charles Roberts was, was uh, on the drug. But since Mark McCaleb was killed, the Saipan has changed commanders. Captain John Renard is known as a man who doesn't run the ship from his cabin. He talks to his crew, and he simply will not tolerate drugs. It's dangerous enough to just operate this ship. We can't afford to have some young man have something else affecting his mind, and, and uh, he could injure a shipmate, uh, he could hurt somebody. And, uh, so we just have a, a no, no tolerance for drugs whatsoever on this ship. Uh, the captain has authorized random locker searches, inspections on the quarter deck, and even drug-sniffing dogs to ferret out contraband. And when drugs are found, the sailor faces a non-judicial punishment called Captain's Mast, where Captain Renard meets out the toughest punishment he's allowed. A healthy chunk of pay that they'll lose and a, quite a bit of restriction and also uh, they'll lose whatever rate they are. I'll, they'll be busted down one rate. But Captain Renard says peer pressure will be the solution to the Navy's drug problem. In the meantime, he's punishing drug offenders and trying to build morale aboard a ship that's had a tough summer. The crew knows fully what happened uh, in each instance, and uh, uh, I think it's behind us now. As Saipan loads up to depart on a six-month cruise, morale is apparently improving. In fact, seven sailors have already re-enlisted so that they can serve on this particular cruise. But Captain Renard says he knows that building and maintaining morale will be a day-to-day -day process. At the Norfolk Naval Base, Kathy Midkiff, The Daily News.